hello guys welcome back to my channel i hope you have been well so today i don't want to deal with discrete element or finite element i want to deal with something else called genetic algorithms yeah, i have seen that yes there are solutions for genetic algorithms but there are no solutions in which we have multiple input variables or independent variables where we have one response and multiple dependent variables so in this case you want to create a genetic algorithm which will optimize this equation or this function so for a genetic algorithm you must have an objective function or the equation that you want to optimize so t is our response z x and y are our input variables so to solve the optimization in the genetic algorithm code okay in matlab you can go to the there is that tool that you can put for the ga but in some cases it it requires you to input so many variables like you'll see you will see later so if you want to do the actual code this this is how you do it so you have to assign the x y and z x y and z you have to assign them to new values as shown x is equal to x into brackets one y x into brackets two as shown here and then we also need the lower limits and the upper limits of the variables as shown in this table so we have x y and z lower limit of x 3 to 100 y 0, 0 0.1 to 1.05 and z 20 to 25 this i've just chosen them randomly as you can see the vector size is not the same it's they are not equal so to solve this we'll see what you'll see what we'll do so let us go now to matlab i've already coded so that i can avoid a lot of a lengthy video so let us go directly to matlab so this is my matlab so our objective function this is how you write it as you can see let us try and compare let's close this let's close this and then we can expand this a bit so as you can see we write our objective function here so you create a function and then you say t this is the name of my function genesis so you can change the name of this function to any any name that you want but when you save it you have to make sure that it's saved in the same name as the function as you can see here i have x x is my variable x is my variable so if i have p i'll come and rename here also p1 and so on and any variable that i choose here is the one that i'm going to use here and if you go and try and use the actual x y and z when you go and try and run your objective your genetic algorithm sorry it will give you errors now as you can see z i rewrite it in this format and z is x3 so i write x into brackets 3 and as you can see i have a dot when i have it squared but i have a dot 2 okay i have a dot 2 so i have z so it's 3 times z you see as you can see i have a dot this dot so this dot ensures that all the values they multiply with each other regardless of the length of the vector so it will eliminate the, there are some errors that you might get if you don't you don't put this dot here so you have to put the dot if you are not sure if the length of the vectors is the same now now let us once you rewrite this equation in this format as you can see when when i'm dividing when i'm dividing x cubed over y cubed you see x one power 3 over x, x into brackets 2 power 2 so this is this represents x1 is x and then cubed power 3 and so on now once you do that you save it now we go to the actual genetic algorithm we go to our genetic algorithm now this is our genetic algorithm this is it so we have now the first thing that we do you see i have lb and ub so this is my lower bound and upper bound now the values of the x1 x2 x3 as i've indicated you see x is 3 so i'll put 3 in that order the way you've named them here the 3 the 4 if we had 4 then the the fourth one is into brackets 4 and so on and so forth now because now we have three variables x1 is 3 now if you put 0 0.01 here it will take the values of x1 as 0. 0 1, which is not the case the value of 0 0.01 is for y now we we go we go further and call all the 
define all the lower ba lower bounds 3 0 0.1 and 20 and then upper bounds 100 1.05 and 25 as you can see i've made some comments here now the next thing that we need to do is to declare the number of variables that i have i have three variables three input variables or independent variables now i put n var is three you have to take note of how you name these because you are going to use them later when we do the actual when we define now the actual optimization code now the next thing is the fitness now this is where we call our objective function because a genetic algorithm it gets the best fit it gets the best fit now this is where we call our genetic algorithm as you can see it's at x at into brackets x gen x so i've called my function this is my function now the next thing is now to define our options in this section now this is now we increase our accuracy as you can see i have ga i have iteration i have display so we display the iteration the maximum generations that i want so this increases the act increasing and improves defines the number of generations increasing improves accuracy so they have the number of generation they have the accuracy now the populations so this is where you you define even the tolerance vary value sorry now this 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 is where now you improve your accuracy now once you write this and you can see th these are my options as you can see each and everything when i highlight here it's here and this is now the optimization part genetic algorithm is not complicated as it looks it's just that it's not available so this is my as you can see i have all my variables when i click here you will find them here in this my up my upper bound my lower bound is there now as you can see now this i have x f val in square brackets and then the ga now this is my ga genetic algorithm now they are in this order as you can see I have some empty squares square brackets here so let's see what happens if i write ga here in matlab so if you do that some things will happen now my function my function is here as you can see and then i have my variables is n variables now a and b a e a e q like these ones i don't have them they are equations a and b and they are variables i don't have them and i don't need them therefore i left them blank the four of them and then i go to lower bound lb upper bound like that i don't have non-linear non non-collinear those things i don't have them so and then my options now from here from here i can simply run i can simply run my genetic algorithm and see if if it can if it can optimize so let's see yes as you can see here in the workspace we have n var it has given me everything that i've put here now x x it has given me the value of x now the value of x it represents now these are the optimized values so for the the minimized value the minimized value of x in the equation now is 3 of y is 0 0.8988 and for z is 20. now keep in mind keep in mind that the f val f val now is the output now this is the value of t this is the value of t now in my equation i have my equation here the value of t when i have run my that is my optimized value of t and the values of x y and z are represented by x here now the other thing that you need to know is that genetic algorithms they naturally they minimize the objective function what if you want to maximize or maximize maximize efficiency or the rate of something now to get the maximum part you just put a negative in front of your objective function you add brackets like that and then you put a minus here control save and then we run this yes, as you can see we have now maximized okay we have now put now the opposite now it it has we have our f val minus times e power 10 minus 1 and now we have 100 0.01 and 25 now this now are our 
maximum values. So that's how you do a genetic algorithm. It's not as complicated as it looks. And if you love my work again, please consider subscribing. Yeah, thank you.